are here. You good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see you. Oh, shoot. I should have gotten some tissue. It is now nine o'clock, and we're gonna go and ask everyone, if you could, to please um, rise. And we're gonna ask that Reverend Ed Lee of Shiloh Baptist Church in McDonough to join us with our invocation, and please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Reverend Lee. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning to Chairman Woods and all the other members of our Board of Commissioners and those who've gathered, let us bow our heads in prayer. God, our Father, we thank you once again for a very beautiful day. We thank you once again for Henry County. We thank you for the Henry County Board of Commissioners. We thank you for those who are in charge of the governance of our county and looking after all of the needs of the citizens. So we just come once again just asking that you give them the strength, uh, the, the oversight, the insight to make all of the decisions that impact each and every one of our lives. We lift up before you the uh, police department, the fire department, all those who are involved in public safety. We lift up to you the Board of Education who are responsible for educating our children we lift up to you uh, recreation, those who are responsible for providing those moments of growth and development in a fellowship and a fun way. We thank you even for our senior citizens. We thank you for uh, our, our babies, our infants. We thank you for our young uh, adults. We thank you for those who, who meet every week uh, in the senior citizen uh, uh, developments around our county. We just ask that you continue to touch the hearts and minds of those of us who are in charge, that we consider all of our citizens in relationships to their need. For we all are stakeholders in the outcome of all the good stuff going on in this county. And we just thank you for another opportunity to meet and greet and to do business in a very orderly way. This is our prayer on this day, and we ask it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let every heart say amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, this meeting of the Board of Commissioners is now hereby called to order. We do announce an uh, agenda amendment and to add an item 10B, uh, which is going to be a presentation from our county attorney regarding the proposed Love Joy annexation. I now will call um, for a motion to accept the agenda. Move to approve. We got a motion. We got a second. Um, all in favor? Any opposed? We will now move to the district um, appointment, to district four appointment to the library board. Um, we're resolving to appoint Kathy Gilbert as district four appointee to the library board. Is there any questions or comments? I now call for a motion for approval. Move to approve. We got a motion. We have a second. Second. We have a second. Any further discussions? All in favor? Any opposed? We now will move to the resolutions of the Board of Commissioners appointing the following citizens to the Henry First Board of Directors with Zachary Daniels as District 1 appointee and John Pearson as District 5 appointee. Any comments or questions regarding these appointees? The floor is now open for a motion for approval. So moved. We got a motion. We have a second by Commissioner Wilson. Um, any comments, questions? All in favor? Any opposed? Regarding our consent agenda items, um, we have um, one SPLOST item 
which is a resolution authorizing the chair to execute all necessary documents for conveyance of fixed assets relating to the water line and fire line at Village Park at North Henry to the Henry County Water Authority. And we also have another um, a consent agenda item of the Parks and Recreation resolving approving a contract with Golf Now for a point of sales golf system for Cotton Fields Golf Course. Are there any items that need to re be removed from the consent agenda? Okay. If not, we'll call for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Chair, I so move. We got a motion. Second. We have a second. Any other comments or questions, concerns? All in favor? Any opposed? We're now ask Mr. Stacy Jordan Rudisal of um, Transportation Planning to come join us for his presentation. Good morning, Chair. Good morning. The item before you this morning is a request for a resolution of support. The Atlanta Regional Commission is opening up funding for transportation projects in the region. And as staff, we're proposing five different projects. And these are in no particular order. The first is a freight cluster plan, which would center on exit 216, which is State Route 155. The second is Highway 81 widening, and this is east of McDonough to Bethany uh, Church. The third one is a rock quarry widening. A fourth one is the widening of East Atlanta Road and to include a connector between East Atlanta Road and the intersection of North Henry Boulevard and Rock Quarry Road. And the last one is a Jodico widening project on the west side of the interstate. The city of Locust Grove and the city of McDonough have passed resolutions sharing in the matching funds for this freight cluster plan. Also, we expect that if a SPLOST 5 is, is approved by the citizens of Henry County, that we would include the Highway 81 widening match and the Rock Quarry Road widening match in that SPLOST. And the reason that we say that is because these uh, right-of-way acquisition projects would begin in the year 2020 and if SPLOS 5 is adopted, then we would start gathering, collecting money in April of 2020. So $2.9 million in SPLOS funding would come from that anticipated SPLOS 5. The remainder is $2,822,000, and this amount would need to be transferred to a DOT infrastructure fund. And we're proposing this because this is a competitive grant program. And if you support our applications for funding, we don't know if the Atlanta Regional Commission will actually approve our requests or not. And so this is before you today for, for your consideration. Yes, sir. Yes. Last meeting, we discussed um, the freight cluster plan. And I think uh, the majority of the board said that um, we weren't interested in doing any studies that um, would bring semi-truck parking lots up and down I-75. Um, I don't think any of us think that will be a good look for Henry County, nor do we think that it will be an economic development driver. Is there a reason why the, this cl cluster plan is in, is in this resolution today? And number two, with McDonough and Locust Grove, um, supporting the truck parking lots in their in their own cities, why do we need to invest in um, um, this piece of the resolution? Right. So the reason it's still in the resolution is because this is a separate study from the truck parking study that the Atlanta Regional Commission is currently conducting. So they're going to spend the majority of this year doing that truck parking study and that's different than what is in this resolution. Now, truck parking can be included in this, or it can definitely not if the board directs us. But what I would suggest is that if we need to address truck parking, for example, if we want to make sure that Henry County is not 
going to be overrun with truck parking or what have you, then we can make sure that that's part of the study and that they can give us a recommendation on how for that not to happen. At this particular point, I mean, I, I think we have plenty of warehouses. We have plenty of truck parking um, in this county. And I don't really see a need with moving forward with, um, with this cluster plan. I think it's going to hurt Henry County and not help Henry County. Um, at this particular point, you know, we have people in Henry County that don't believe that Henry County can compete with the counties on the northern side of the region. But I honestly believe that this is a county that can compete. We have, we have all, you know, everything that um, uh, a jurisdiction would need in order to attract those professional services type of industries to Henry County. We just don't have a focus <clears throat> from an economic um, uh, development uh, point of view or um, as a board of commissioner. So I think, um, you know, for years this county has been focused on distribution, warehousing, Savannah this, Savannah that. We need to change. We, it's, it's, time, it's, time to, it's time to pivot and start focusing on professional services. If you look at our communities, our residential communities don't match what you see in, the commercial, in our commercial areas. We have to improve our commercial areas and bring them up to par because what we're going to see in the future, we're going to see people start leaving Henry County, and that's what we don't want. We have a wonderful demographic here currently, and we want to maintain it and increase it. So for, for those reasons, I don't think that this cluster, this cluster plan will be a benefit to, um, to our residents. Okay, we've heard from Commissioner Holmes. I want to hear from other commissioners, and then, I, of course, I have questions as well. Any other comments regarding the freight cluster plan from the other commissioners? Yeah, I'll go last. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, thank you for presenting this to us this morning. I think that it's still very vague about this cluster plan. It's not enough information for, for me as a commissioner to make a decision on it. Um, I see that you're asking us to spend almost $6 million in matching funds, um, and it still does not address our present transportation needs. I see nothing. I don't know how this list was created or who was consulted about um, the um, different projects that you guys would support, but I see nothing about 155 where the truck traffic is now and the issues that we have. And I know that DOT has said that they would fund it, but the county has not come up with any matching funds to try to expedite uh, that project, and it's not even listed on here. There's nothing about the Western Parallel Connector to give our citizens uh, access off of 75 to go north and south. I just think that we've put things in here. I'm really concerned about this Chambers Road and Hudson Bridge Road project. Tell me, is that uh, Chambers on the side of the BP and Jonesboro Road going down between Community Christian Church to Hudson Bridge? So, Commissioner, Project 5, which is the Jodico Road widening that you had mentioned from Chambers Road to Hudson Bridge Road, this would begin at Jodico Atlanta South and head west to where Jodico intersects Hudson Bridge Road. So that's the segment of roadway that we're talking about widening. And as far as the project list is concerned, these are federal funds and the federal funds require a federal process. So if there are projects that are currently in the works that did not begin using the federal process, they would have to start over again. And for that reason, we were looking at projects other than the Western Parallel Connector, which I understand is to be 100% funded by the Georgia Department of Transportation. And so since that's already funded, we didn't want to include that. Tell me where you said this Joe DeCohen Chambers Road is again. Right. So we're looking at Project 5, which is Joe DeCohen Widening, and this is from Chambers Road to Hudson Bridge Road. And so Chambers is right there at the church that you had mentioned. Mm -hmm. And if you head west, it would extend all the way to the intersection with Hudson Bridge Road, just past the intersection with Flippin. So it's that segment of roadway there. As far as 155 is concerned, it's our understanding that 155 is congested with freight truck traffic, and this freight cluster plan would include an area between exit 216, which is State Route 155, all the way down to exit 212. And it would include State Route 42 on the east side all the way to 155 on the west side. So the freight cluster plan is not just one segment. It's all of this area. 
and you had mentioned the six million dollars but the freight cluster plan by itself we can only apply for two hundred fifty thousand dollars and staff is recommending that we apply for the entire amount and because the city of Locust Grove and the city of McDonough will be sharing if we choose to move forward the county's match would be $42,000. You still did not, the freight cluster plan and the Jodico Road, we're still not addressing our transportation issues with this. Where is the paperwork on the freight cluster plan and where is the application? I asked for this last week. I asked our county manager. No one got back with me. So I'm feeling that there's some information that's not being shared with us about this freight cluster plan. Commissioner Clemens, um, what Stacy has indicate, indicated, and I want to be very clear about what you all are being asked to vote on tonight this morning the freight cluster plan is not a truck stop plan at all it is a it's part of a planning process that arc has identified some of our most critical freight corridors in henry county as you all know we have a lot of distribution centers warehouse developments and we have a freight issue here in the county what this freight cluster plan will do is identify what our transportation needs are. We're in the process of doing a CID through the Development Authority for this corridor. In addition, we're looking at CIDs in other areas, but we also have the interchange um, um, modific or justification report that's ongoing. If we want to determine what our needs are along these corridors, we've got to study the corridors and get the best practices that are out there. This is certainly not a plan to create a truck stop. It is a planning process. It'll be as part of a transportation planning. You'll look at the traffic engineering, the safety, intersection design, cost estimates, and future needs. And it's similar to our comprehensive transportation plan, but it's a supplement of that plan. As you all know, when the CTP was done, it's a holistic approach. The CTP identified a list of transportation priorities. The list that's being presented to you all was part of those priorities identified in the comprehensive transportation plan. Staff did not just sit in a room and create a project list. We pulled from our high priorities, and that's how we identified which projects needed to go towards go to ARC for funding. We don't want to include projects that already have started because if we include those projects, everything stops. You have to go through the federal process. So we're not looking at projects like the Western Parallel Connector. We're not looking at the 155 corridor because those are things that we want to move ahead much further. The call for projects from ARC is for future federal funding. And that's why the staff is looking at projects that were already identified in our CTP that we may not have, a, have an identified funding source or we have SPLOS funds that are available, but it just may not be adequate funding. So the list, again, was developed based on our CTP, and the purpose of this freight cluster plan is to study our freight activity that's along our 155 corridor and along our 42 corridor and determine what our next needs are. This is not to create a truck stop um, in Henry County. I think we've heard loud and clear from the board that that's not what we want, but we've got to identify how we can solve some of our issues that we're currently experiencing. And this is all that this study will do. We will be involved in the process. Um, we can provide additional information from the Atlanta Regional Commission, but there's not anything specific in terms of a project list because that's the purpose of the plan. The plan will study our transportation needs. It will determine um, engineering issues that need to be identified. It will identify whatever safety issues that we have, but we've got to get through that process to determine what the project list will include. Okay, um, Commissioner Holmes, and then I want to make sure we check in with some other commissioners. Commissioner Holmes. Um, <clears throat> uh, Sherry, I think um, the term was truck parking lots, not truck stops. So I'm not exactly sure the difference, but um, I'm uncomfortable with both. Um, is there a possibility we can move this resolution forward without the cluster plan and, the, and we can look at the cluster plan at a later date? The board can certainly approve a resolution excluding this project off of the list. Um, the only challenge with that is we have to have everything submitted to the Atlanta Regional Commission by May 16th, 17th. So our next meeting, we would have to make a determination on whether we want to add the freight cluster plan. I do believe, and again, 
we've got to look at some mechanisms for addressing our freight issues. We can't just continue to build roads and think that the freight traffic is going to go away. We've got to look at how do we get the trucks in and out? Do we have proper radii? Is, the, is it engineered correctly? Is it safe? So we've got to look at that at some point. And it may be something that we have to come back at the staff level, but when we have a plan that's going to be conducted and we have the buy-in from two cities and we're not paying a full cost for it, it's not costing us anything to do the plan. I mean, it's costing Costing us, but it's not going to be any harm in getting a plan that's going to identify what our needs are. are. Okay, um, let me hear from a couple of other commissioners. Commissioner Pratt. Change gears for a second. Let, let's talk about time frame because this is federal grants, federal funding. So once we get involved with the feds, this is going to take a minute. And I'm, I'm going to circle back around to the Rock Quarry Road widening. You know, we need to move on this pretty quickly. Um, and, you know, and I appreciate you guys putting this in here my, my few questions i have what if we splash five does not pass and then we are on the hook for this money where's it going to come from and my other question what kind of time frame are we looking at on this project because i i was hopeful to get this project moving within the next couple of years federal what kind of time frame are we looking at well if if the project and stacy certainly correct me what will happen is once, if we are selected for the funding, the Atlanta Regional Commission will actually move this project into our TIP, which is the Transportation Improvement Program. That is a six-year program. Mm -hmm. So within six years, we have to have started that project and have, have movement on the project. The Atlanta Regional Commission has been very, very um, direct in terms of putting projects in the TIP that aren't moving. So we've got to commit that we're going to move this project. Staff feels comfortable that if we get the funding, we can move the project. Again, these are critical projects, and we've got to be able to show you all and the citizens that we can get these projects moving. So six years is about the time frame for in terms of getting the project moving. All right. No splash five. Gets voted down. Then what happens? It would have to come out of general fund. Okay. Um, final question. On the Rock Quarry Road widening, I, I see the city of McDonough, I see the city of Locust Grove contributing to some things. How much is the city of Stockbridge contributing to the uh, Rock Quarry Road widening? Commissioner Prince, within the Transportation Improvement Program at the Atlanta Regional Commission, the city of Stockbridge is the project sponsor for the Rock Quarry Road extension, which would be a portion of the East Atlanta Road widening and Rock Quarry Road connection. Within the TIP, they have an estimated cost, and this is from several years ago, but it's over $5 million. And beyond that contribution to this project list, the city of Stockbridge isn't offering additional cash. So you didn't answer my question. How much is the city of Stockbridge contributing to the Rock Quarry widening between 42 and the hospital? I'm not aware of they that. They aren't yet. contributing anything to that project. Okay. Other questions? Commissioner I'm not going to support anything that may bring any tractor trailer traffic for parking. Uh, it, that, that's going to cause, if the, if the warehouse is going to call this traffic, they need to figure out a way how to store their tractor trailers. I, I don't think we are to get involved in, in having parking lots. Parking lots for tractor trailers causes other issues other than traffic. They're going to cause uh, environmental issues. Somebody's going to have to be, we'll have to pay somebody to keep them things um, maintained. I, I'm not, I'm not going to support that portion of the freight cluster. Okay, other comments, Commissioner Barn. I agree with my colleagues on, on the uh, freight cluster plan and I do have some other questions. Uh, you know, on this thing with the uh, the Jodico widening, is part of that tied into the city of Stockbridge as well? The widening will start at Chambers and will go towards Hudson Bridge, so it should be all within the county. Um, most of the time when the cities annex property, they annex to the right-of-way, and so the road remains the responsibility of the county. So it would fall within the county's boundaries. Okay. Well, um, the question that I had, I think you've addressed because um, my questions were relating to how do these projects relate to the comprehensive transportation plan, and you've addressed that. 
And the, the second question I had related to, yes, if the voters do not approve of SPLOS 5, what would be our alternative? You've addressed that. Um, regarding this freight cluster plan, um, I think what I, and I agree that we do not need to create an image of us being a predominantly, continue to be a predominantly um, distribution environment, but what I'm hearing from you is that this freight cluster plan is to help us assess where we are and how do we move forward to avoid, you know, moving in that direction. So I think what needs to happen, we need to have obviously more conversation about that. Um, because it seems to me that we will not clearly understand the benefit of what this freight cluster, cluster plan will do regarding our vision. Um, so it sounds like the majority of the board is suggesting that it comes off of the resolution for today, and that's what I'm hearing. Um, again, regarding the other projects, um, I just hope that these are the, well, the question before I get there, are these projects listed in priority? So when we submit them to the Atlanta Region Commission and they actually ask us what are our top three priorities, are these projects listed in priority is the question that I now have. The projects are not listed in priority. Um, when the projects are submitted to the Atlanta Regional Commission, it's done electronically. So you just submit everything via the, like, the electronic um, submittal online. So they don't ask you for, an, for the priority. You just submit them on behalf of the county. Um, we will certainly, as part of our inclusion process, we will send a cover letter to the Atlanta Regional Commission, and then we will identify our projects. Again, all of the projects did come from our comprehensive transportation plan and were listed as high priority projects. Okay. So again, the question is, we don't have to submit it to the Atlanta Regional Commission as priorities, but we need to understand what the priorities are, because right now it seems like if I were to submit this, it seems like the freight cluster plan seems to be the major priority, but we need to identify the priorities just in case, again, we're not able to receive support from all five projects, but we as a board should understand what our top three, at least top five priorities, so that they are listed in that order. That is correct. What we will do is if it is the wishes of the board, um, when the motion is made, the freight cluster plan will come off of this list. We will then submit projects two through five, um, again, in no order of priority, but we do as a county need to be able to identify if we're only able to receive two projects, what those two projects would be. And staff will be prepared to have those conversations with you all in terms of safety, um, the volume of traffic, because we did take into account lots of things before we decided on these projects. Commissioner Holmes. Sorry about that, Madam Chair. You said submit two, three, five. You take you take two through five. Oh, two through mm -hmm. five. Yes, sir. Right. Make the motion. Okay. Any other comments, questions? I just want to say that I actually provided the uh, freight improvement project recommendation that was provided by the state to the other commissioners, and citizens can pick this up. It's online, and they can read it as well. Um, and I think we've cleared it on the freight cluster plan. There's nothing that we need to do that the state has not done when it comes to the freight uh, improvement plans for the state of Georgia. They are driving freight to Georgia um, and they are looking at rerouting and urban routes and putting more money in between now and 2050 to help the congestion. None of those plans include Henry County. Um, so I think that if we're looking at what we're going to do in Henry County, we're going to have to do it. Um, we are talking about moving these two through five ahead within six years when there are still projects like 155 widening, and I have to think about that because that's where all the traffic is, um, and the Western Parallel Connector that will get our citizens off of 75 and giving us access from north to south that we haven't done anything with. They've been on the books forever. So I'm still concerned about $5 million that we're talking about matching that we may have to pay out of general funds that we, we're not even able to push the projects forward that we already have on the book. So I still want to look at these projects. Um, I think that it's moving too fast. May 16th is, is coming up, but we're not in a hurry to do that. We've got issues that we need to deal with right now uh, before we're looking at bringing on more issues that we can't handle. So I'm not in a hurry to do this, and I understand the deadline of the yeah. proposal. Well, and, and thank you for that comment. Um, and I will say that we need to be comfortable with whatever we do submit to the ARC because it is a hard deadline. So is there any other comments or questions here? Commissioner Barnes. I'm just not comfortable on this today. Are you going to make a motion? Yeah, I would make a motion that we table this so we can sit and uh, and ha get some more information and just fully understand this and see how we're going to fund it and that matter. Okay, we have a motion to table. I second. 
We have a second. Any other comments or questions about that? Yes. yes. So we've got a motion and we've got a second. Um, so let, let me finish the process. We've got a motion and a second to table it. Um, let, I've got to finish the process and then we'll come back. Um, all in favor of tabling it, um, please up, raise your hand. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Point of order, we should have discussion after the table in a second. We can have discussion. I'm sorry, okay. After, after the, so we should have had discussion before we voted. Okay, that's right, correct. All right, so we've had a motion and a second. Let me clarify that. Um, now let's have further discussion before we take the final vote. So thank you, Commissioner Prince. Um, my question is, I can understand tabling the, uh, the cluster plan, but I don't see what the issue is in terms of um, voting on um, the roads. I, you know, I, I think you know, even, if, even if they aren't prioritized or are prioritized, we can su still submit all of the roads to, to ARC. I don't see what the issue is there. That we submit this and SPLOS does not pass, we still have to fund it. Um, I think that we have some funding issues, um, and correct me um, if I'm wrong, that we have some funding issues already that we have. Um, just a couple months ago, we needed $2 million for some trails. Now we're talking about putting $5 million up um, that um, for tr transportation projects, when we got transportation projects on the book right now that we've not been able to fund. So I'm Wood. saying tabling it because we need to look at the finances first before we make this commitment. Commissioner, we're like three, four years out from the next plus vote. Yeah. And you know, with the transportation needs, um, I don't see anybody voting down the next plus, especially if it's a transportation plus. Uh, when I drove back from Savannah this weekend, um, I was driving north on I-75 when I hit Henry County. It seemed like traffic was worse than ever, even with the reverse lanes. Um, and nobody is on, nobody is taking the reverse lanes, especially the people who can't enter onto the freeway, um, you know, below exit 212, and you know, in Stockbridge. So I got off at exit 218, and every single road was packed. There were hundreds of cars. Every road I turned down, there were hundreds of cars on every single road trying to get back to Fairview. So I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that there is a need to take, to reduce traffic and take cars off the, off the roads. And truck lanes is not going to do it. Reverse lanes is not going to do it. The only thing that's going to do it is going to be transportation, transit. That's the only way we're going to be able to solve this problem. If you look at the northern part of, uh, of the region, Gwinnett, Cobb, they all have transportation. They're all prospering with new businesses. They're not, they're not, um, they're not increasing um, the millage rate. They're reducing their millage rate. And they're, bring, and they're bringing wonderful professional service businesses to those communities to reduce the tax burden on their citizens. All this stuff has been, has been studied. It's all been reviewed, <coughs> and we know that transportation brings brings the demographic that you want to your communities. It increases property values, and it brings businesses. It doesn't bring truck stops and truck parking lots to your community, and that's we, the direction we need to go. Heard from Commissioner Commissioner Holmes. Does someone else have some comments? Because I've got some as well. If we table this, is it going to slow down the process if we come back next meeting? If we table this matter, we will not have time unless we have a call meeting to submit this to the Atlanta Regional Commission because the meeting will be on May 17th at 630. All of the proposals have to be submitted by close of business on May 17th. So we would not, we would just not have any projects to submit um, for the next call for projects. Also, just for clarification, projects two and three are already SPLOS projects. So funding is already allocated for those two projects. So we're only looking at project four and project five in which additional funding would be needed. Okay, very good. Okay, Commissioner Prince. Right now, <coughs> I would ask the board to please consider the Rock Quarry Road widening to, to the fourth district. This is a matter of public safety. The entire north end of the county is connected to the hospital by a two-lane road. You know, I, I'd appreciate it if the board would consider 
at least moving this one forward, if not the other projects. To that effect, num number four, correction, uh, county manager, county manager, this is probably what Rocky's telling you. Item number four is a splash project as well. And um, for years we've been pushing for that north-south connector from North Henry County to Piedmont Henry Hospital as well because there is no direct way to get to the hospital, especially if the train is running and East Atlanta is backed up all the way to Valley Hill. So in, just from a public safety perspective, four should be a priority for the most dense part of the county, which is the district, which is district five. Um, Commissioner Clemens, and then we're gonna allow you to speak, county manager. And my concern is that there's nothing addressing the present trap. And I, I, I see everything here and I'm okay with the ones that Commissioner um, District five and district four have said, I'm not comfortable with project five. Um, I would like to look at the other projects that are on the TIP and see if it's something else that we can add. Uh, either we need to take it off but I'm still feeling like the citizens of District 2 are still not getting a relief uh, from the traffic issues that we're dealing with. So I would like to see either another project on there that addresses those issues on that west side of the um, county. Um, so that's my issue, is that I don't see anything that addresses the issues that we're having on the west side of the county. Okay. And staff will be more than happy to sit down with you and provide you a list of the projects. I will tell you, and then I'm going to let Rocky um, clarify on a couple of projects. The Jodico Widening Project, um, Everyone's familiar with where this project is. And right now you have the Jodico Bridge that goes from an eight lane bridge and then it goes down to four, two lanes, four lanes and then down to two. Right. This will pick up where it drops from four to take you all the way back to Hudson Bridge. And I don't know how many people travel this road on a daily basis, but if you're out there, and I'm sure you do, Commissioner, because mm -hmm. it's in your district. Yes. Any given time of the day, the traffic bottlenecks at this point. We've had calls from Community Christian. We've had calls from the businesses in that corridor that they're coming into a from an eight lane to a four lane to a two lane. I assure you that if this project is approved, it will enhance those individuals that are trying to travel to the west side of the county. Um, but, you, he, but when he explained it to me, he told me that it was coming up the side where Community Christian is building the soccer fields. So you guys told me that it was Chambers going down that side road to Jodico. That's not coming across Hudson Bridge from District 4 going into District 2. So I need, to, I need you to explain exactly where this is because Commissioner Prince and I have been discussing where is this. Okay. Do you want to point out to, to clarify that. I will pull up a map while Rocky is. And I do want to clarify one thing. Rocky did correct me because I misspoke. The projects that are submitted through the Atlanta Regional Com Commission, we will have to prioritize. So on the application, it does ask for a priority. So I apologize for that error. Okay. Uh, just to clarify a little bit regarding uh, SPLOS, uh, State Route 81 and Rock Quarry are on our current SPLOS 4 but it's only for design only. This is, we're asking for the next step, which is right away. As Stacy mentioned, uh, we hope for SPLOS 5 or T-SPLOS. That's where the matching funds will come from. Uh, the design portion going through a, uh, the federal process, it takes about two to three years. So by the time we finish the design, that's why we selected the year 2020 on the, for these funds to be available, like the, the staff mentioned, it's a six-year window. Uh, that's around the time that the design will be completed, and then that's where the funds from the feds will be available, and hopefully the plus five or TIS plus will be in place, and that's where the matching will be. Now, the other two projects, uh, they could be also on a SPLOS. You know, it doesn't have to come from general funds those projects are not on any SPLOS, they could be added to SPLOS as well, or to SPLOS. So uh, that's something to keep in mind that it doesn't have to come from general funds unless the program doesn't pass. So right. just want to clarify that. Right. Okay. Um, any other questions from commissioners while she's pulling up the uh, map? Sure. Yes, Commissioner Holmes. <clears throat> I'm on board with approving moving forward with, with approving the road projects and then we can prioritize um, once it's submitted to um, to uh, ARC well, we had a, a, a motion in the second to table and so we've had discussions about that motion 
So now let's carry forth that motion to decide whether we then move to the, the next, uh, well, so now we're having an amended motion to, um, to move forward with the road projects to, um, that are listed here in this listing. So we have an amended motion. So I don't know if that's legal, Chair. I'd like to. Ask I'm looking the at our, our county attorney as we speak. I have, and I have to recall who made the original motion. The person made who made the original, the original motion, motion yes. can amend that motion, or that motion can be withdrawn, and no, a new motion can be made. Yeah. So we just amended the motion. Is the question. So. But I would have to be the one to amend the motion. That's right. You would be the one to amend okay. the motion. So. I'm not going to amend. Okay. The so um, Commissioner Barnes chooses not to amend the motion. So. That motion fails, and the motion uh, now to um, table this discussion, understanding that um, if we um, table this, then it will require um, another call meeting to discuss further. So um, as we are waiting, um, we're going to let you speak, and then we'll come back to this motion that um, has been made. That's just the limits, the, the limits. beginning and the end. So nothing's going to be done on Chambers or Hudson Bridge. Hudson Bridge is already four lane. So basically those are the limits, the beginning and ends. But all the work will be on Jodico, which uh, it is a needed uh, widening project as well. Okay, so we've had a motion to table the discussion. All in favor of um, tabling the um, resolution um, vote. All in favor. All, any opposed to tabling? So majority that we will move forward with the resolution and the resolution to be stated is that this is to support the projects that have been stated here and that we are to come back regarding that freight cluster plan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure no, we need to vote on that okay. second resolution or whatever. Whatever other motion, there's been no motion, there's been no resolution of this case, okay. of this matter. Thank you for the help today. All right, so now we um, have a, we need a vote now, or any discussions based on that, on the resolution that we're speaking about. Okay. I'll make a motion, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to um, move forward with the road projects two through five in no particular order. And uh, table the discuss uh, table the vote on the um, on the um, cluster plan the, the freight cluster plan. Okay, we have a, a motion. Is second. There a second. Any further discussions? So is that to table the cluster plan or take it out? Just to post. Yes, take, take it out. Table. Take it out. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make of this resolution. Is that out of this resolution? Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, just to clarify, the motion is that we would. Um, Definitely submit projects two through five and tape the freight cluster plan um, and allow the um, staff to submit this to ARC. So, I have another point of discussion. Um, I just want to make sure that since we're talking about widening and this is uh, Jodico coming down, uh, that's a conversation <coughs> I think that we definitely need to engage if this motion passes today, that we definitely want to engage the citizens in that area of Jodico about their two way lanes are about to become four way lanes. Uh, down in that area. I know that will definitely be an issue. Um, some people don't want four-way lanes coming down through their community, and that Jodico community um, definitely is going to need to be engaged in having some discussions about it. I know if it passes today, it won't, we won't be able to revert it, but um, just out of sensitivity for the community, we need to always engage our community about what we're going to do in their communities. Go ahead. You correct. I wasn't sure if it was a motion on the floor. And, and let me be very clear in terms of what, what you all are doing today. This is only to allow staff to submit the applications. I assure you that this is not to go ahead and start on the project because this will take months and months of going through the process. We're competing with every other county in terms of a pot of money. And they may come back and tell us out of the five projects, you're only going to be awarded funding for one project. So whatever those projects are, whatever 
that one project is, we will make sure that we go through the same process as, as we've done on any other project. I will tell you, and I'm not sure if a motion's on the floor, but if you all um, do move in the direction of approving this, could we just add a statement that we will not start the projects until after July 1, 2018, or commit the funding until after July 1, 2018? Because if we commit it now, it will impact our fund balance because we'll have to show it as restricted funds. So if you would just add that these projects, we will commit funding after July 1st, but that's just for record keeping for us. Yes. Uh, is this a, you still on your motion or just a question or comment? No, just a question. Uh, right. I just wanted to um, uh, let Commissioner Clemens know that um, this is um, a resolution seeking funding for the project. You know, that's a, the project is in your district, so you will have full say on how you want that Jodico, that, that role to look on, um, on Jodico. So that, if you're still in office at the time these roles are funded, um, that it would be you know, basically on you, on how you want that community to look based on the input from the community. Right, and I would like to also reemphasize that these are projects that will be submitted to ARC, um, but also the, the decisions we probably won't get back from the ARC until later in the year. I think in the fall is what I understand. So uh, again, it needs for future projects to get into the plan so that at least we're pre-planning some, some major areas. So, okay, other comments? Commissioner uh, Barr? I, I do have a question. When I look at this resolution, then I see a commitment on the county's part for these funds. So are you telling me we're just going to send the list to Atlanta, but we're not actually voting to fund these things? No, sir, I'm not saying that. The resolution that you all are voting on is two part. As part of the application process, the Atlanta Regional Commission wants a resolution from all of the elected officials indicating that if they are selected, that they are willing to commit the necessary funding for the project. And the reason they're doing this is because for a number of years, jurisdictions have come to the Atlanta Regional Commission, asked for federal funding, and 10 years down the road, down the road, the project's still not completed and it's because the funding's not available. So this is the county's commitment stating that we recognize that these are our priorities and that if we are selected for funding that we will have the funds available to commit. Now, I'm not saying that you have to commit the entire amount at one given, <coughs> in one given motion, but what will happen is once the project is programmed, we will go back and we'll look at the preliminary engineering, the right of way, the construction costs, the utility costs, and then the county will be on the hook for whatever that commitment is. That will also come back to you all in the form of a, um, we used to call them a project framework agreement, and I'm not sure if we still do the project framework agreements, but this will not be the only time that you all will hear about this project because once we're selected, we'll bring a resolution back to the board to accept the funding that we've been allocated. So it will come back to you all um, through the process. So the total is $5.7 million. Yes, sir. And out of that, we're, we're contributing 2.9 to a splash that's not had been voted on yet. Give me one second. We'll be contributing 2.822. Of funds for Splash 5 that we don't have yet. For Splash 5, it would be 2.9 million. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, you answered my question. Thanks. Okay, Commissioner Prince. Just as a point of clarification, I don't want to speak for the second district. I just want to make sure that if, you know, the second district is speaking for her people and she would like to pull um, number five out, is that your wish we could move on the others and pull five out if that's the second district's wish? Well, that is already on the TIP plan, right? That's already on our transportation improvement plan. It's already in there. We don't know what's going to get funded. So if we're going to move on it and take the cluster plan out, I'm not going to leave the second district out. 10-4. Just making sure. Okay. So we had a motion and a second, and I think the uh, Commissioner Holmes, if you could amend your motion to also include that the funding would be committed July 1, 2018. That's what uh, the county uh, managers requested. Okay. We can take um, a vote. So my motion is what I said previously, plus the, um, the funding will be included July 1, 2018. Thank you. Okay, so we, and we had a motion and we had a second. We had discussion. All in favor? Any opposed? 
Okay, we have our resolution now. Okay. Okay, we'll now move into our planning and zoning segment. Um, we have a public hearing of an ordinance by um, Henry County to amend Chapter 7 of the Henry County Unified Land Development Code. So, Stacy, you may proceed on. Good morning, Chair, Commissioners. The Unified Land Development Code prohibits illuminated signs in the residential zoning districts, and this includes religious facilities. And so the item that's before you today is a public hearing which would change our Unified Land Development Code and particularly subsection 7.04.09A. And what we're proposing, the way we're proposing for it to read is entrance signs, subdivision signs, and signs on properties with a conditional use utilized for religious facilities may be illuminated and this would allow for church signs to be illuminated in the residential zoning districts. Okay, we've heard the presentation from Stacy, and this is a public hearing. So persons wishing to be heard in opposition to this request will have a total of 10 minutes to present their opposition, and those in favor will also have 10 minutes to present. Is there anyone wishing to um, speak in opposition to this ordinance? Swenson, I'm from Stockbridge, the unincorporated part. The previous commissions saw fit to restrict uh, certain actions um, by religious and commercial entities. <clears throat> and it has worked fairly well up to now. But when we run across a situation where someone with some pull, I won't say who, that uh, doesn't like a particular law, well, we just change the law. And that's what you're trying to do here is just arbitrarily change the law to suit one or two individuals. That's like changing the, uh, that's like changing the um, density of uh, D's district where they were RA and R1, now they want to make them R3, R5, R99, whatever. You want high density. And Mr. Holmes over here, he wants, uh, he wants mass transit. None of the, these things are needed. None of these things can be afforded. I'm not for this. I'm not for this at all. I say we try and keep Henry County as it is, which is a residential community. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in opposition of this ordinance? We will now grant 10 minutes to those that would like to speak in favor of this ordinance. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. I'm Larry Turner, and I'm with Jellicoe Road United Methodist Church. I'm the uh, communications coordinator. And I think it's really a good idea to change this ordinance. I understand that things have been this way for quite some time, but uh, we used to all ride horses and ride in buggies. But, you know, times change, and people change, and the way we do things change. We used to not have computers, but now we have computers. We are in a very competitive world now. Churches are, businesses are, and we at Jodico Road, we all offer 37 different uh, services to our community. Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, NA, uh, Grief Share, just to name a few, we have a uh, food pantry that delivered over 70,000 pounds of food to the needy and homeless in our community last year. 
But one thing we hear from a lot of people that come to our church is when we <coughs> ask them how they found out about it, they say word of mouth. So, well, did you see our sign? What sign? We have a small sign now, and we need a larger sign to be able to get our message out to the community. We could promote our Boy Scouts better. We can promote our homeless offerings better. We could promote NA. Uh, we have a NAMI group that meets there. We have an awful lot of services that we provide that our community that we could better promote with a illuminated sign. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this ordinance? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jim Berstetta. I am a member of the Jodico Road United Methodist Church. I'm also involved with a mental health support group. Uh, with a new electronic sign, we will be able to advertise our support groups and encourage people to join us. Please, uh, please approve the change so that we can make more people aware of our resource to help support families dealing with serious mental illnesses. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Good morning, Chair, Good. Commissioners. Good morning. My name is Jordan Fleming, and I'm the Director of Student Ministries at Jodico Road United Methodist. And one of our biggest goals of our ministry is to get our students more involved in helping our community, helping our community grow and become new leaders in our community. And we have tons of different opportunities from our, for our children from kindergarten up to seniors in high school to get involved with serving our community. We have Easter egg hunts, we have fall festivals, we have uh, ways for them to serve in our live nativity that happens every year and I know it would be a huge tool to help bring more teenagers, more children into our church if more parents who are rushing by with their kids in the car can see this big sign which will catch their attention and say this is a place that has things for my family, has things for my children and would really be able to promote that kind of growth in our community. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? This now um, concludes our um, public hearing. If there are no others to speak in the remaining time of the, those wishing to speak in favor. So we will now um, just say if there are any comments or questions from the board before we open the floor for a motion. Yes. yes. Stacey, in the background of the um, <coughs> executive summary here, it says, the ULDC prohibits illuminated signs on properties that are zoned residential. The proposed amendment would allow illuminated signs in residential zoning districts for properties with conditional use permit utilized for residential facilities. Should this say religious facilities or I saw it there, but in the background, should it say it over there? I see it here. Th this resolution is what you'll actually be approving or denying. Okay, so we don't have to have it. Okay. So that is a point of clarification. But that is an error then. Yeah. Okay, any other comments or questions from the board? <clears throat> the floor is now open for a motion for approval of this ordinance. Chair, I so move that we approve this ordinance. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any further discussions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. We're now moving to item 10, which is a resolution approving a service agreement with the insurance broker. And I understand Ms. Doris Patterson will make that presentation. Good morning, Chair and Commissioners. Good morning. This item is a resolution to request the board to approve and adopt the Employee Benefits Insurance Consulting Services Agreement. As you probably remember, two weeks ago, um, the board authorized the county manager and staff to come back with an, a, a service agreement that we could offer to our current employee benefits broker. And so what you have in front of you is a res resolution and an agreement to offer <coughs> a service agreement to Mr. Mike Gassis, appointing him as the um, county broker slash consultant. This agreement would be for the period of June 1st, 2017, ending May 31st, 2018. 
and Mr. Gass's desires to serve as a broker of records. And um, there is a clause within the agreement. It is for one year, but it can be terminated by either party with a 30-day notice. Okay? If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer at this, at this time. So we're asking if you could please approve the resolution and the service agreement as presented. Okay. Well, um, let me, I want to begin with this one. Um, I read through the service agreement, and what is missing from the service agreement are some deliverable dates. Because it seems as in previous times, and even this year, we ran into a situation where we didn't receive the information, nor the analysis, nor the recommendations, until we're in the ninth hour, and then we were rushed as a board of commissioners to make some decisions that we really needed more time to absorb. So this service agreement should have some deliverables um, in relation to when do we want this information presented to the staff and to the board within a reasonable amount of time, and I would say at least three months before we have to make that decision. But there are also other deliverables that should be made because the service of contract agreement is very thorough, I think it's very good, but it also needs to have some deliverable dates so that we are able to not only understand what the service agreement says, but we need to have some accountability as to the, when these things should be delivered so that we again are given fair time to make some proper decisions. Yes, ma'am, to your first point, you are absolutely correct. We did say that we would request our broker consultant to bring us information before the end of January for our planning period so we can add that date in there in terms of the New Year's benefits. Um, to the other point, the deliverable dates are in the agreement. They are referenced in terms of annual, quarter, uh, twice a year. They don't have dates attached, but we have put the periods in there for the um, expectation of the services. Where is that? Throughout the contract. They are in the related services. Yeah, yeah just a moment. Okay, so where, where did you say, um, just if you will point those out for us, Ms. Okay, I don't have them marked, but I certainly can go through and locate them if you would like. Okay. All right, Commissioner Prince, why are you looking? Ms. Patterson, thank you for bringing this. The, the dates you're referring to are soft dates. Yes. And, and I think this board would like to see hard dates, and not okay. just on the uh, present, presentation of, you know, actually how much we're going to pay. Yes, But sir. I would like to see, you know, like the, the wellness program. I would like to see, you know, let's say in three months, uh, kind of a, a rough draft of what we're going to do, and in six months have more of a hardened, and then, you know, maybe nine months we're starting to, uh, advertise with the employees getting people on board okay I, I want to see hard dates of all the deliverables in some reasonable term and, and I you know and I say this because we need accountability and I need to know you know before we get to the ninth hour that we're we're heading in that direction and I want plenty of notice because that we you know we spent 4.3 million additional this year and that is a lot of money yes sir so I'm gonna need to see and I, I would recommend maybe working with the broker and then somewhat with the board to come up with reasonable, because I, I couldn't tell you how long it's going to take to implement a wellness program or anything like that. So yes, sir. I, I would recommend getting together, putting some hard dates in here, making sure the board's agreeable. And I, I would like to see, you know, quarterly progress reports, hard dates to the board, how we're looking on our insurance, what we can do to help. So these are just some points that I have. Absolutely. Thank you. And I would request if the board, um, other than the deliverable dates, we can certainly bring that back um, or attach it, I should say, to the agreement. If the board could approve the agreement, um, understanding that deliverable dates will be attached, and we'll work with the broker to get those dates. Other questions or, or comments on that? Uh, but, yes. And I think the deliverable dates is an important element in what we did in this agreement. Since I didn't have any deliverable dates, is we have a 30-day termination provision that, in my mind, kind of substitutes for that. So if there's not progress made to management's satisfaction that things are moving along, then management could say, look, you, you, need, to, you need to hurry things up and get us information, or we can terminate. So what we did in, in lieu of hard dates, since I, I don't know that anybody at your staff level is just like mr prince said is really capable of identifying a lot of those dates what we did instead was just put a, a termination basically a termination for convenience if we just don't think it's moving along fast enough we have the right to terminate the agreement 
So that was the substitute for those hard dates in the agreement as it exists. Um, but yeah, I think you're right, and the range of services is so broad in this, I don't know that it's really feasible for each one of those enumerated services to put a date. So I think staff should identify what dates can we target, and others really are kind of soft services anyway. It's advise and consult and assist, and those you really can't put a date on. But I think there would be some, probably some hard dates that will take some more work. I, I think the, the goal here was to get this back to you at this meeting, and I don't think there was enough information at the staff level to hard date a lot of those things. I would rather see this done right the first time than to approve it and then have to come back and do a termination in 30 days. You know, we, we, we're in no slap hurry. We seem to always be in a slap hurry, and I appreciate you guys getting this to me. But I, before I approve anything, I'm going to have to have some, some dates. And I understand some are going to be soft. I mean, I, I, I get that, but some of these have got to be hard before I can even look at it. And again, I would rather do this right the first time and then have to come back and then cancel it and then it, I just don't, I don't think that's the proper way to do business. Thank you. From other commissioners. What's the repercussions Well, us tabling this item today and, and you getting with our insurance broker and, and get these dates that everybody's concerned about and then bringing it back to the board? I mean, what's your thought? Yes, sir. Right now, we do not have an agreement with a broker of record. And Mr. Gasses, as well as the county, needs to have an agreement so that we can continue operating as we have designated. Uh, the agreement outlines the expectations on behalf of the broker and the county. The dates, although it's important, is a supplemental piece of the contract. And so, and correct me if I'm wrong, Patrick, but I believe that the contract can be approved for services and then we can just add the, the expectation dates attached to it. It doesn't change the services that are being requested. You will be working with the broker um, probably 100% of the time, correct? So, probably 90% I mean, of the time. So if we're, looking, look, if we're looking for dates, I mean, you should know exactly what you would be looking for in a certain um, time period. So is, is it possible for you to add um, a number of important dates uh, for review or for um, the uh, broker now, and then we can just move forward with the vote? Yes, sir. There are some, some milestones that are already indicated in the contract. For instance, one of the things that we are asking for specifically are quarterly utilization reviews. And so instead of saying quarterly, which is what we have in the contract, we could easily say by March 30th, June 30th, we can put the dates in there. That's not a problem. We've asked for semi-annual uh, utilization reviews for staff. So we can say June and December for those things too. So we can easily go back in and substitute hard dates if that's what you all want. Typically we would work with the broker though so that we could allow the broker to uh, bring the information because a lot of times the broker would have to get information from the providers. And so even though we may say a hard date of June 30th, it may be July 15th before the providers have actually provided the information to the broker. That's not anything that would discredit the broker if he's <coughs> waiting on information. So we use soft dates, quarterly, semi-annual, monthly, those kinds of things. Uh, the broker would also be participating in our orientation program. We're going to, uh, which the broker's already doing this part, we're going to bi-weekly orientation though to co coincide with the payroll periods. That's going to be a change and he's agreed to do that. So again, the time frame is bi-weekly. I can put dates in there if I need to, however, it doesn't change the time frame. But I'll be happy to do that. I'm just saying it doesn't change the scope of the agreement so that we could, if you would please either vote on the agreement itself and then we can also uh, amend and put hard dates where we can. Yeah, Commissioner. Uh, or question. Have you sat down and went over this contract with a broker and has he agreed to everything in here? I spoke with Mr. Gasses yesterday and he has a, he is interested in, in serving as a county's broker and we have agreed to work together to make this uh, arrangement work. So I believe that there is a comfort. Most of, and one of the things we spoke about yesterday, most of the uh, services that are listed in the agreement are not new. These are things that we've actually already talked about. 
All this does is solidify the expectation on both beh behalf of the county and on behalf of the consultant. Okay. So it is important that we have an agreement with the consultant so that we can continue um, with the services. All right, Commissioner, Commissioner Clemens. Yeah, I have an issue with um, a couple of things in here that I would like to make sure that the broker, um, the county, and all of us are on the same page. I know that the county is moving to performance and evaluation, and that's the best thing that we could do. Um, but under the other service requirements, uh, where it talks about provide, provide staff support to facilitate and implement the employee wellness program to improve employee health overall and reduce employee and retiree health care costs both in short and long term. And so they're providing support to the wellness program that we already have. Is that what you're saying? Or will they be doing the wellness uh, program? And then how are you going to be able to evaluate? So it's just a lot of things. I want to make sure that the broker understands this. Um, and I think you guys completed this before yesterday, but to have um, a conversation by phone yesterday with the broker about it and, and, and justify that as that the broker understands what's expected. I don't know that that's the right way to do business. We actually spoke in person, Commissioner Clemens. He's, okay. he's here for open enrollment, and he was here all day yesterday, so we did speak about this, but we've talked about it before. I'm sorry, and I wanted to make sure I understood your, your first question about the wellness program. Explain to me what the under service requirements, number one, means and who's going to be handling the wellness program and who will be responsible for the improvement of the employee health overall and reduce the employee and retiree health care costs. Ultimately, the county is responsible for that. Okay. HR has been entrusted with that um, responsibility. The right. broker's purpose would be to work with, with our department and with the employees, quite frankly, to make that happen. So typically, the broker would be recommending services, would be uh, providing certain resources, making recommendations. Those are the things that the broker would be expected to do. Ultimately, the decision, though, belongs to the county. Uh, his main role is to consult the county, and that's exactly what he would be doing with that service as well. It's the same as, I'm sorry, I was just, just going to say, it's the same as when we um, bring benefits to the board for approval. The consultant makes recommendations, but the board actually has to approve the recommendations. So this would work basically the same way. Yeah, and, and my question about that is because I know that um, I've made recommendations as a commissioner to the wellness program and it wasn't even considered. So now you want to put this on the broker that he will be responsible for this when you don't even consider the recommendations from the wellness program as a commissioner's. So I'm really concerned about this part of this uh, agreement as well. Right now what we have um, to entertain all recommendations, including the ones that you presented, Commissioner Clemens, we have a wellness team, a wellness steering team, and a wellness advisory team. That group of employees will continue to operate. They will work with HR and with the broker, which we have been doing. We also have a wellness advisory group, which uh, consists of the vendors who actually provide the funds for the wellness program. There's some specific parameters that the group considers. They do consider every uh, initiative that's brought forth, and the team actually either adopts, approves, or advances, I should say, or tables uh, the recommendations that are brought forth. And that's how they're all handled. So the, okay, so we'll, we'll deal with it. Okay. okay, other comments or questions? Commissioner Wilson? Uh, I don't have any. Okay, any other comments or questions? All right, um, the floor is now open for a, mo a motion regarding this ordinance. Move to approve. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussions or comments? Um, I would like to just recommend that in this ordinance, we do need to have at least one hard date of when the analysis information is presented. Um, and you already alluded to that we've got something implied. That is where I um, uh, uh, amend the motion to approve this ordinance, but put, at least put that hard date in there and at least and have an amendment of some of the deliverables that Yes, Commissioner Prince mentioned that should happen, so I'm recommending an amended amendment to that motion. Okay, we have a, an amended a motion that was just made. Uh, further discussion? Yeah, I'll add that amendment. Do I have a hard date? Okay, with the amended item. Yes, okay. with the amended item. Okay, so we've got a, a, a motion from Commissioner Barham. Is there a second? Calling for Okay, Commissioner Holmes made a second. Any further discussions? or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, 
All right, thank well, you. Thank you. We'll now have the presentation that, um, of the item that was uh, made to uh, amend the agenda regarding a presentation of the proposal of joint annexation. And we'll call upon Mr. Jocksetter to make that presentation. Good morning, Chair, uh, Good members morning. of the board. As you are all aware, we received notice from the city of Lovejoy of a potential annexation of, it boils down to approximately 400 acres of land into the city limits of Lovejoy. This annexation is proceeding under the 100% method, and as you all know, that method requires 100% of the property owners to make application for the annexation. What is different about this annexation is that the city will be crossing the county line. It will be crossing out of Clayton County into Henry County if the annexation is successful. And I know there's been a lot of confusion about what happens, how do we all deal with these types of applications. And I just wanted to walk the board through the process that Georgia law designates for an annexation by the 100% method that crosses a county line. Uh, in short, look, the map you're looking at, the area that's highlighted in uh, pink is the existing city of Lovejoy. The areas highlighted in that blue-gray color are the properties that have been identified as the potentially annexed property. Now, what happens in an annexation that crosses the state line is that the, the city annexing the property has to give you notice that they've received an application, which they have done. We then respond by giving them notice that we would like a meeting, which we have done. That meeting takes place between the Board of Commissioners of the county and the mayor and council of the city. So we're working to schedule that. You've all received emails from your staff to help identify some dates, so I would urge you to help identify some dates so we can get that meeting conducted. At that meeting, we meet with the mayor and council of the city of Lovejoy, and we discuss the annexation. And at that time, we'll find out questions that I'm sure everybody has. And I don't know the answers to those questions either. What is the plan for the property? What are their plan for the services? We don't know those answers. That's the reason we have these meetings. After that meeting is concluded, the county has 30 days to object to the annexation. The county can object on a number of bases in determining whether or not you want to object. The law requires that you, that you consider the long range economic and overall well being of the county, school systems, and the municipality. You are to consider the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens, both of the county, of the city, and, and the property owner. You are to consider the negative fiscal impact, if any, that would result from this annexation. And you're also to consider the interest of the property owner that's seeking annexation. Those are the four things that the law requires you to consider. If you assert an objection, and if that objection is based upon those four, one or more of those four areas of inquiry, then the, cat, the city is stopped from proceeding with the annexation unless they file a lawsuit. They would have to file a lawsuit in the Superior Court. It would be the Superior Court of Henry County. The court would appoint a judge from outside the district. It would be a judge that's neither Henry County judge nor Clayton County judge. And that judge would hear the evidence and decide whether or not there is evidence to support the county's objection. If there is evidence to support the county's objection, then the annexation would not proceed. If the judge finds that the evidence is not sufficient to support the annexation or the objection, then the judge would order that the annexation can proceed. What we know today is that there's a, a, a relatively small group of property owners, I think it's four property owners, that have filed this application. Their application indicates that the property would not be rezoned, that there would be no rezoning on the property. This property as it sits today is largely unimproved uh, farmland, pasture land, wooded properties. There are a few single family residences scattered about throughout the properties. That's what we know about it today. Uh, we will have to find out all the other questions that, that we all have. I have them as well. I've made inquiries both to the attorney representing the city of Lovejoy and I had one conversation with a representative of one of the property owners all of whom indicated to me that, that there are no immediate plans to make any development of the property. I don't know what immediate means any more than anybody else does. The, 
The law would generally prohibit them from seeking to rezone for 12 months after the annexation is completed. So you, even if there is a long-term plan to annex or to zone, rezone and develop the property, they have to sit and wait. And the rezoning would take place under the city of Lovejoy's zoning ordinances, not under the county zoning ordinances. So that's what we know today. That's what the process is today. We will have ample opportunity to discuss the good, the bad, and and otherwise with respect to this annexation. But I did want to make sure the board was clear on how that procedure works. So we will have a joint meeting with the city of Lovejoy as soon as we can get dates both from you and to coordinate with the city. We will discuss all of those issues. And in the meantime, the manager and her staff will be evaluating this annexation for those items that I listed. Economic, overall well-being, health, safety, and welfare, fiscal impact, and interest of the property. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to try to answer them. Otherwise, this was just for informational purposes, just so you have an understanding. Yes, Commissioner Holmes. <coughs> Patrick, <coughs> um, can you explain to me how the, I have two questions. Can you, first, can you explain to me how elections will work if this uh, uh, goes through? And number two, um, can Henry County annex Lake Spivey into Henry County? Uh, let me work those backwards. First of all, could Henry County expand the boundaries? No, Henry County by itself doesn't have the authority to exceed its own boundaries. That would take an act of the Georgia legislature. Um, and I don't mind telling you, I don't know exactly what that procedure would look like, but I expect it would be a complex procedure. Um, how will elections work? County elections, state elections would proceed just like they proceed today. Our Board of Elections would do exactly what our Board of Elections does today. The question would be how do city elections take place? And that's one of those things we would have to work out. Will the city of Lovejoy contract with the Henry County Board of Elections? Will they contract with somebody else? They may have their own Board of Elections. C cities can conduct their own elections. They aren't required to go to a County Board of Elections to conduct their own elections. So that's one of those issues that we will have to work out, find out what their plan is. Because we don't know what their plan is today. Interestingly enough, the law doesn't require the city provide us with a plan. If they were annexing, if any city is annexing under the 60% method, they're required to tell us what's the plan. They're not required to do that in this instance. I think, it's a, I think it's a gap in the law, maybe a little failure in the law. There's a lot of operational issues that will arise, just like arises with every city. They're just complicated because we're crossing a county line. <coughs> Who will provide services? Uh, my understanding is the city of Lovejoy has a police department but not a fire department. So we have to deal with who's gonna provide fire protection? Who's gonna provide 911 service? If, if you're within that area and you dial 911, does it go to our center? Does Lovejoy have a center? I'm sure they don't. Does it go to Clayton County Center? We're gonna to have to deal with all of the operational aspects that we deal with every day. And those are the questions that will have to be hashed out. Uh, the good news, I guess the good news today is there are very few residents, very few services would need to be provided on that property. It's largely uninhabited. But that, we all know, that's not likely to be the case for long. And we do need to consider the long-range impact. In fact, the law says you should consider the long-range impact. So we need to be looking forward to those types of questions. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Well, thank you for the um, presentation, Mr. Jocksetter. Thank you. We will now move into our public comment section <clears throat> where citizens are allowed to voice county-related concerns, opinions that are not listed on the agenda during this portion of the meeting. All persons wishing to speak for public comments must sign in with the county clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. And you must complete the co public comment speaker form or you will not be recognized. And you will be able to address the board for five minutes. Um, we will now call uh, Mr. Bill Tony, who has to, wants to speak on the Water Authority, Police Department, and the golf course. Mr. Tony. Thank you. Uh, with, with respect, I'd like to uh, ask for an extension of time, a vote for extension of time if I need it. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's and been a uh, request for an extension of five minutes to the time. Is there um, support from the board to extend the time? Okay, so we will give grant you five minutes, Mr. Tony, and I'll begin it now. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. The are board, the board is not. I asked, I, ma'am, I asked for a vote. And we just made a, a, an appeal to the board 
for an extension of time, and there was no okay. support for the extension let me of make, time. Let me make a record. So at this time, Mr. Tony, we're going to ask that you please move forward to address your topics within the five minutes that you've been granted. Okay, I'd like to start off with the police department. I'd like to say y'all get off your whatevers and help support our police department. I don't know if everybody's having the same problem as I'm having. My house has been broken into, my car's been stripped in my yard, my neighbor's car's been stripped. Uh, now, one of my rental houses last week, somebody kicked in the door on 81, close to your house. Y'all giving away money for his park that needs to be put into the police department. We're paying stupid amounts of money To Mr. Farmer, and we've got all this money sitting over there. They're giving out bonuses. This man's making this kind of money, and you got a police department that's starving to death. I've talked to the chief. He says that he's short on men. He's short on money. He don't know. He don't know what, where to go from here. Y'all are not supporting him. Gary, this is out your way, dude. We, we and you have sat down. We talked about this. You're not helping him out. You're giving your money to to, to this guy. With projections that he's going to get a raise in December of $37,000. That's a police officer. Do y'all folks not get this? You know, we're giving two mils of tax to these guys. Look at that. Man's going to be making, this man's going to be making $338,000 almost as much as the President of the United States. This is what, this is what the Water Department gets, $13 million. Every building over there looks like the Taj Mahal. These guys are getting bonuses, they're getting, they're the highest paid people in the county everybody over there at the Water Authority. Every time I bring it up to you folks, it's like a taboo. You don't, you don't even want to talk about it. Now, I'm asking y'all again, and I would be asking y'all forever until the day I fall out of here, that y'all need to take this money and give half of it back to the citizens in the form of a tax cut instead of a tax increase, and the other half give it to public safety. You fire and police department need this money desperately. They need police officers. You're going to have everybody in here. Mr. Barham, would you look at me for just a minute, please, sir? How would you like for your wife to be sitting in her bedroom and have some two thugs to kick her in? Uh, Tony, Pardon me? You just um, speak to your issues and not um, address any personal issues, please. Thank you. You don't really like me very much, do you, Miss Miss Wood? just because I don't support you. Well, let me tell you, Lindy Farmer, I've called him, tried to get an appointment. I've come by his office, he's never there. This is what I get. It's like looking for Waldo, he's never there. I don't know what the man does. Y'all need to do the right thing. This is what you can do. Please do this. Do it for the citizens of this county. Let's keep, keep the thugs and all out of here. Let's get a decent police department. Let's get it going. Let's stop this. The insanity has got to stop. You people have got to start doing your job. And I would expect more from you, Ms. Holmes. I mean, Ms. Wood. Please have respect for your citizens. Take their feelings into consideration. And, and let me say this. You better treat everybody the same way you treat me. 
the whole board. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tony. We now will um, uh, invite up Ms. Mr. Carl Swenson to speak about Village Park. Again, Carl Swenson from Stockbridge, the unincorporated part. Um, the destination park, you got it. <laughs> it's a destination park, okay? The only problem with it is <coughs> Who's coming? Um, this morning, we were looking at how many people were there and what counties they were from. DeKalb, Fulton. I think I actually saw, yeah, that's another DeKalb. Uh, come on. Fulton. Ah, we got Clayton. And the cab and so on and so forth. Folks. Whether the rest of you are aware of it or, or not, um, there was an accident on Fairview Road, right outside the park, where a teenager was run off by a couple of other teenagers, ran into a truck, and was summarily dispatched. God rest his soul. Um, you know what happened where the sidewalks are? So when you start considering throwing another two million into parks, walkways up into DeKalb, I have to ask, are you doing it for Henry County residents, or are you doing it for Clayton, DeKalb, Fulton, and the other people that use the park? You guys did go through a, uh, a vote on keeping the, the, the dogs out of the park. Well, people in Henry County got the word, but it seems like the people from surrounding counties, they didn't hear that. The dogs are still there. They were there this morning. So <clears throat> I don't know what to tell you. I do want to say uh, I want to give a, a shout out to Sherry and, and Brad did a great job of coming out and addressing the problems that the uh, neighbor neighbors had or have concerning the water runoff. Uh, that's good job to both of you. Okay, and I hope that something good comes from that. Another thing that I wanted to address here was the um, propensity to do some strange things. Um, I just caught wind of this one, and you can, well, yeah, you can pull that up. Um, Chairman, is it my understanding that this is going to be a $65? Uh, 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 event for people to come and listen to what the people of the county should ordinarily hear for free. That sounds a little elitist to me, and I wonder why. Um, I also have one other issue that I want to address, and that is uh, uh, an open records request for the uh, number of years or for the length of time that uh, Gas's Insurance has been doing this for the county and whether or not the contracts awarded this company are no-bid contracts. Something stinks, and we're not real happy with that. But the issue that happened over the weekend there at the park is something that should concern all of you because if we are going to have an influx of uh, young people going to this park not to play football but for nefarious purposes, that's going to be a problem. And that's going to put more pressure on the police who, other than the Stockbridge precinct, don't have the Fairview precinct of note to help them out. They need a presence up there. Obviously, this is a this is a wake up call. It is so. Let's uh, let's do what we can and help the people because 
It's about the kids, right? Thank you. Thank you. Our next public comment will come from Mr. Larry Morey and John Redfern um, to speak about county chairman. And you've been granted your five minutes as well. <clears throat> My name is Larry Morey and I represent ethics in government. And uh, before we start, I think we need to, the last meeting with Mr. Blake uh, was uh, a chairman. I think you need to go back to House Bill 554. And I think the, the meeting was held uh, out of order because of the way you appointed him. And uh, I think you better double check on that. And uh, I'm sure your attorney will be able to find that. Uh, <clears throat> One thing I do want to ask, I, I want to ask our chairman, have you sent out a email that uh, specifically asked for support for a truck terminal in Henry County? Have you, have you sent that out to the other commissioners? I have not. You have not? And I don't need to answer You're a matter of record that you have not. Okay. I'm going to make sure now because we're going to open record. Every year, last year included uh, with insurance and this year with insurance and highway preferences we get down to the last minute and we have got to sign contract is it a it seems to be a pattern that if you don't sign it today we're just going to lose everything the world's going to come to an end we've we've got to sign these contracts blake i do want to say uh I appreciate you standing up and saying, no, I want to read it. I want to be able to look at it. Because each one of you guys have, have set aside Mr. Gassis to negotiate your insurance. Same thing last year. Last minute, we got to do it. we got to have a signed statement. But you didn't. You went ahead and let him negotiate, and you never did have a signed contract. So this year, we've got to do the same thing. But Sherry has assured me that she's going to get a signed contract this time. But that was supposed to be last year. But you know, I got a picture right here that goes back to 212 with Mr. Gassis and Mr. Preston. You see, they had their offices was in the same same uh, Right here. We're in the same office, Mr. Buddy Welch's office, and uh, it seems that there was a lot of almost two and two for one. At that time, they were getting about a million and a half dollars to negotiate our insurance, and I think Commissioner Chairman Tommy Smith negotiated it down to three quarter of a million. So it's just a few. You know, it's just a little bit of money. And uh, so this year, you know, I started asking questions after last year's debacle. And it seems that we don't, we don't deal with but one major carrier. That's Blue Cross Blue Shield. Well, there's another major carrier out there called United. But we don't, we don't do nothing to them because they don't pay gas as a commission. And Ms. Patterson, I'm, I'm sure you're, you're a great employee, but I don't believe you have a clue what's going on in this insurance market. And I believe if, if we'll have an open discussion and bring in professional, and I believe we'll find out that they, they ain't probably nobody in the county that works for the county or works in the county that's got a clue what's going on with this insurance program. But Mr. Gassis, and I'm sure with all them consultants he brought in with him the other day, if he don't know it, Lord have mercy. So you see, we just keep going down the same road. It's kind of like what Mr. Bill said, the insanity of it. We just keep doing the same thing. But here's the problem. These, these employees that you got and these citizens of this county, the employees are getting a half dose of, of health care. And our commissioner and our county is being raped with high taxes. Now, y'all going to raise taxes this year, probably at least one, maybe two mills. 
Keep spending. So we'll all put all of you out of office. Just keep spending. Keep raising money. People are getting tired of that. And people, Mr. Chairman, people are getting tired of these truck terminals too. And these trucks bringing into the county. I believe you did support that and I'm gonna prove it and we'll visit you again. And I noticed I've got five seconds. Remember what I'm telling you. I got two seconds, one second. Thank you, Mr. Morey. We will now um, move to the approval for our minutes. Um, for April 17th, regarding the call BLC meeting regarding insurance and the April 18th Board of Commissioners regular meeting, we're now calling for a motion for approval of the minutes. So move. We've got a motion. Second. We have a second. Any discussion regarding those minutes? All in favor? Any opposed? We're now moving to the chair and commissioner comments. Any comments? Hey, I got a question. If I could, I'd like to ask our county attorney, uh, Mr. Tony, continues to come up here and ask us about water authority. I've had discussions with some of the folks at the water authority. He has yet to go to one of their board's meetings, but he comes up here and criticizes the water authority because we're on TV. But I would like for Mr. Jogstetter to explain to the citizens, Mr. Tony, what our role is with the Water Authority and the, how this two mill tax relates. Well, generally your uh, relationship with the Water Authority is such that you appoint the authority members. You, you, your influence ends with your appointment powers. So once you appoint a member to the Water Authority and they act in their, within their authority, they have the authority to do whatever it is that they do as long as they don't exceed the powers granted to them by the legislature. You appoint them for a term, so you can't just willy-nilly pull one off. I mean, some of you have, had, some of your board members have agreed that they would resign upon request. Some haven't, I suppose. But what your, what your control over the water authority is, is your appointing power to that board. So your ability to control their actions is limited to how much influence you you individually or collectively have over your board members as relates to two mill tax i can't give you the the entire history but the two mill tax that is imposed collected and paid over to the water authority is part of a long series of bonded indebtedness that the water authority has going back probably some 20 years in order to cease that two mill tax collection we would have to unwind that bonded indebtedness. Essentially, we would have to have that money paid back. I don't know the I don't know the amount of that. I didn't I didn't pull any records related to it. It's multiple millions, probably in the tens of millions, and it it essentially it's on. They, I think they use it almost like a revolving line of credit. It's used for a lot of their improvements, building plants, building facilities, and things of that nature. But it is you are contractually bound to continue to assess that two mil tax as long as that debt is outstanding. It, we could begin to unwind it. It would be a complicated long-term prospect to unwind that two mil tax. Some of you might remember the hospital authority. We used to collect either one or two mils of tax to pay over to the hospital authority. That wasn't done in connection with any bonds, my recollection is. My recollection is that was just done to support the operations of the water authority, or I'm sorry, the hospital authority, and it was just ended. It, we, the board voted to cease doing that. We, I don't think you have that same level of flexibility with this two mills. It would require a, an undoing of a long series of loan obligations. So that would be an enormously difficult, if not impossible, task. Thank you. Yes, sir. Right. Commissioner Clemens. Um, yes, I want to just say that um, our development authority, um, Charlie Mosley, has resigned to take another position, and we want to just wish him well. Um, he's very well respected in the industry um, of the development authority and has been instrumental in some big uh, announcements for Henry County. Um, Mr. Jockstetter, I did send you an email um, because I want to make sure that 
Um, I don't know that we have any rights or say so in the selection of the next development authority person, but I wanted to see if there was anything that we could do to try to at least um, have our leadership role recognized um, that we have a vision for this county as well um, before the selection process of the uh, next development authority director. And similar to the Water Authority, your, your direct influence over the selection of the Water or the Development Authority's executive director is limited to your appointment power. You appoint the members of the Development Authority and obviously your leadership role in the community. You, you can certainly utilize your leadership role in the community, but you don't have, the Board of Commissioners does not have the power or the legal authority to appoint an executive director or to veto an executive director. That was just like with the Water Authority. Both of those entities were created by the Georgia legislature and their powers, their duties, and their, that separation of powers was created by the legislature. So you, you do have influence, but you don't have any real authority. And I would suggest that you don't hesitate to use your leadership ability and your influence to make known your desires. Well, we, we were uh, pleased with um, the wins that we did get under Charlie, and I would just hope that they will get someone uh, better than Charlie or at least uh, equal to. Commissioner Prince. Um, just want a public service announcement. We have a budget hearing today at 1.00 and uh, I'd like to invite the citizens to come out and see how the commissioners are spending your money. Um, this, the budget dictates how we set the millage, so uh, please come out at one and um, see how your commissioners are spending your money. Thank you. Right, and, and my comments are as well, we wish Charlie Mosley the very best um, in his new um, position. I understand with the Atlanta Chamber of Commerce, and he has done great work here in Henry County, bringing investment and jobs to this county, so we commend him and wish him the very best. Um, also, we do again invite you to come back at one o'clock for our public meeting. Um, one thing I would like to address is I oftentimes, when I'm attending Atlanta Region Commission, I do bring back comments to our Board of Commissioners to keep them posted of updates that I get from the Atlanta Region Commission. And um, the comments that you've heard probably earlier today about um, my support of a terminal, truck terminal, I am not in support of one. But you did hear, or you could find an email that I did state that uh, we do want to be at the table for all truck um, freight conversations so that we know that we are reaching the vision for Henry County. So again, we are going to shape Henry County, work towards the vision, continue to support the input that we're getting from our citizens so that again, we will be able to move this county in a forward position. So at this time, we'll now move into the upcoming meeting and events. We've already mentioned our one o'clock call workshop meeting today regarding our 2017-2018 proposed budget. On May 4th at 11 o'clock a.m. is a public hearing regarding the FY17-2018 budget. And then on May 17th at 6.30 p.m. is our regular BOC meeting, which we will also adopt the um, FY17-18 budget. And then on June 6th at 9 o'clock a.m. is a regular BOC meeting. We now will um, uh, move into an executive session and um, ask the county attorney to state what we have for our executive session. It'll be pending litigation and real estate acquisition. Okay. We've heard from our county attorney of our topics for the executive session. We move for a motion to move into executive session. We'll move. We got a motion. Second. Okay. Um, all, okay, any comments? All in favor? Okay, we will now um, move into our executive session.